Welcome to the counter offer where we take the news and we tell you the truth. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> okay. You want to restart easy. that? Or? <laughs> no, this is it. <laughs> okay. This is it. We're going we're, live. We're, yep. We're live. Um, it's very interesting. You know, there's going through the articles, not a lot of positive articles, and they know oh, that's on, what Charles. gets that's what gets the clicks. So we're going to give you the uh, the news. So I'm going to start it off. Maybe that's a good angle. With you get more viewers by doing some doom some, and gloom. I, I just don't like that though. You know, it just doesn't it doesn't feel warm and cozy inside. Talking if about you can warm watch warm this. This will be the last video. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's talk about a big positive. First Republic failure. Obviously, oh, that was. Uh, I don't even want to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> that was a pretty big piece of news. Uh, obviously, J.P. Morgan took that over. Um, early Monday, the FDIC took control of First Republic, sold it substantial majority of its loans and assets to J.P. Morgan, the largest bank with more than $3.7 trillion in assets. So now you can add First Republic. You obviously have uh, Villa, uh, Silicon Valley. Uh, very interesting is that J.P. Morgan acquired two hundred. $203 billion in loans and other securities, but passed on assuming First Republic's corporate debt and preferred stock. Which is interesting because if you're taking control, I would assume that you're getting... Yeah, because they screw the shareholders. Anybody who that had... That is that's exactly brutal. Yeah. So and that's probably going to continue. And the two, number two one reason... Things, actually. Number one reason was the high interest rates. Yeah. You know? So... They offered better interest rates than what was offered by Fannie and Freddie, which is obviously they're yeah, selling they it off. Yeah, Mark Zuckerberg a 1.5% loan. That's a guy that uh, you... When the interest rates were something like three and a half. That's crazy. But I guess, you know... He's got good credit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> He's got great credit. Exactly. Well, the easiest way to say it is that leaving the rates high, it, we're going to see more of this. And to be honest, when you centralize the banking, which is what they're trying to do, that's not good for anyone because First Republic was offering better rates. And then when you centralize the banking and you take the people that were offering the better rates, you know, I know people that have loans at, uh, but they said they're not gonna change anything. All the branches are gonna remain open. Uh, it'll be interesting in the consolidation. What's your thoughts? I know you had uh, some, some- Oh, there's a funny, a bunch of funny memes and all sorts of things I've seen, but the funniest one was this one where they're all like, like it, it was like the Knicks or the Jimmy Butler or somebody going like, ah, oh, and it's like uh, First Republic Bank employees changing their LinkedIn to JP Morgan. <laughs> 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 I think it's a disgrace, honestly. So, you know, you know where I stand on it. If the Federal Reserve wants to keep raising rates, it is better to go to treasurydirect.gov and to buy a treasury bill and collect the interest from the US government than it is to go to a regional bank. That is a situation that has been created by the Federal Reserve raising rates. So you're exactly right, there will be more. PacWest is next, that they say, and uh, It's unfortunate, more, to be more. honest, because opening a bank is not easy. Yeah. And, you know, it's... And well, I guess, uh, Lost my train of thought, but there was one more important thing I was going to say about Well, that. if you want to think of it while you're going over your beautiful yes. article, very positive. I have Eric a good brings, positive article. Thank so you, I'm Eric. not talking about First Republic Bank. It should yeah. be, we do not talk about banks. <laughs> oh, this is what I was going to say, actually. There have been four of the biggest bank failures in history. Uh, three of them have been in the last two months. Wow. So. What about 2009? That is number one. And that, that was, was uh, what's that bank called? Merrill Lynch? Not, not Wachovia. Uh, no, it was Merrill Lynch going to, mm. oh, Countrywide? No, anyway. Wachovia was pretty big. Wachovia was big. Well, but Bank they, of America taking over. No, the same thing. Yeah, yeah. Here we are, next stage, stage of the cycle. Like, yeah. It's actually, you know. Invest in physical assets. Yeah, when are people going to wake up? Don't go into the stock market. So. Which, which positive article do I want? Manhattan Trophy Properties lead luxury contracts to a 12-month high. Wow. 11 trophy properties, which are classified as homes priced at $10 million or more, went into contract. 
pushing last week's volume to nearly 285 million. Uh, last week alone. Yeah. The 11 contracts In, for trophy what, Manhattan properties or New York is the City? highest figure since December 20th, 2021. Wow. Uh, two of the best ones were a penthouse at 500 West 18th Street, which, funny enough, was a bankrupt development uh, that was just revitalized. And what uh, would that go for? $28 million, something along those lines. That was a penthouse? Yep, the I home asked $28 well. million from 34. Wow. Uh, yep, that was the, one of the highest. That's there were 27 units apartment. that went into contract last week. The most expensive unit to enter a contract was at 500 West 18th Street, formerly known as the XI building. Oh, yeah. yes. And I remember yes. watching that during COVID yep. being like, that's going to uh, fail. <laughs> and <laughs> I can watch it on my walk to work every single day because yeah. you could see it poking out onto 17th Street. Yep. Uh, the other I one. I can't believe they got 28. Is a very, wow. very expensive. Uh, there's a Chinese developer who had a property right on Central Park South or Central Park East, uh, a townhouse, 70, 45 East 74th Street. Uh, when I looked at that listing, I was like, 20 something. That's million. a nice way to live. Oh, really? Like, wow. You walk into that type of place. And Luxury. You, Mansion. Yeah. That man what, sleeps very, very well. What did it go? Uh, go for? <laughs> not much. 26. I'm surprised. 26, the, five, townhouses 20, on the Upper East Coast. Up, up from, oh, it asked 26.5, up from 24.8 million when it was listed in January. Wow. Annual taxes are 186,000. Drop in the bucket. Yeah, I mean, when you're a billionaire, who cares? Yeah, I was going to say, you just pay cash for that, and then uh, it's just renting out a gigantic house in Manhattan. And then it's your playground. Well, we're going to move to another beautiful thing. Oh, Could yeah, that's actually interesting you say that. A person who bought it was an international buyer who is relocating his entire family to Manhattan. So, wow. You know, oh, talk about, like, relocating. It's like... That's a big part of the story right there. Yeah, Holy no, cow. Yeah, uh, international... Well, you do wonder, you know, okay, a Chinese billionaire sold it. Who's buying it? It's yeah. a family man who's actually relocating his family to New York City. They don't know name, country of origin? Uh, no. I didn't say. Yeah. LLC definitely for days in trusts. Anyway, you actually spoke about it. I don't know if it was on camera, but uh, Blackstone, their real estate trust is limiting withdrawals for the sixth straight month, which is very interesting. So we've talked about Blackstone a lot. They closed on one of the biggest funds by three teachers unions, three state teacher unions, all in the South, and they were giving them, I don't know how many billions of dollars, I forgot the, the, the total, but it's interesting because they're taking in all this money, creating a trust, and then the, so th these are and the numbers. And they lock the door behind you. Exactly, exactly. You, you want to you know how much you're allowed to withdraw, which is the fine print that you probably don't know when you invest in these funds? $100,000. Investors asked to redeem <laughs> $4.5 in April. Okay. Yeah. The fund allowed 1.3. So that means... I, I wonder who the lucky 1.3 billion were. <laughs> exactly. I would imagine that they are somehow connected to Blackstone. Yeah, <laughs> and, yeah. And have specific yep. circumstances that, yep. you know, they're like, yeah, yeah. Uh, That's only 29%. So imagine you put in $100,000 and you want to withdraw $100,000. You can only take out 29000 and the rest stays there. So they, and this is interesting, the real estate trust restricts withdrawals, listen to this, to 2% a month or 5% max per quarter. So you're only allowed to withdraw 5%. So imagine you want to withdraw all your money. How long it's going to take you to withdraw all your money if it's five quarters? That's crazy. <laughs> That's so... For anyone that is wondering, we're literally giving you the full scope of what's going on. They're getting all the money from the teachers' unions, and if the teachers' unions want money back, they can only withdraw 5% well, a quarter. that's why they're getting it from the teachers' unions. Because exactly. Because they don't want to have to repay it. Yep. Um, it's, it's, as my father always says, investigate, then invest. Uh, Read the perspectives. <laughs> 
Read well, the prospectus. This would be in there because yeah. that would—that's completely nobody reads, legal. Nobody reads this prospectus yeah. when it's coming from Blackstone, and you all, everybody wants to get in. Yep. Oh, it's the safest thing ever. I mean, that's—you know—real estate is not a liquid asset, <laughs> but boy, if I put my money in a fund, I expect I would, to get it back. Yes, hundred uh, percent. Home buyers are eager, but sellers are scarce. Yes. The housing market typically comes to life in spring when buyers emerge in the warmer weather. This year, the market appears stuck in a deep freeze, and the biggest culprit is lack of sellers, housing experts say. Mm -hmm. There's an interest among buyers. Mortgage applications were up 10% in March from the month before, but the number of homes for sale is low. The mismatch is caused in part by homeowners who are inclined to sell but are sitting on the sidelines, scared off by steep prices and mortgage rates that, would face, that they would face as buyers. Yep, double. Yeah. what they are currently locked in with. That's why you call Eric and Charles yeah. and you go to the off-market opportunities. We, I There's had plenty of people that five are buyer calls today yeah. and they still haven't bought months later. They inquired I mean, about a property. Years later. Yeah. I, I get the same people messaging me on listings that are <laughs> it's crazy. From like 2019. And by the way, this is the reason we don't blame the buyers. They're just not properly educated on the market. And Going into a buying process anywhere in Manhattan with all the fluctuation, with all the news, and you have a full-time job and you're trying to understand the residential market in Manhattan, like it's, imp it's almost impossible. And that's why they, they're not buying because they need that necessary nudge. They need to feel confident in the price they're getting, the interest rate, the location, the apartment, everything. So that's why it's vital to be working with an agent, a good agent, not any agent, a good agent. Yeah. Well, here's a very funny thought. Okay. Okay. I like to laugh. All right. Well, when mortgage rates were low and it was COVID, right? Middle of the pandemic. It was actually a all the good way time. to even 2020. Yeah. Everybody was saying it's a good time. They were thinking, now I can go out and buy. I've been saving my money. This is a perfect time to buy. Where are all the sellers? Well, nobody was selling. Then the buyers, those same buyers in 2021, were saying, oh, I missed out. I missed out. The prices were, uh, no, nobody was selling. You know, I didn't see the prices that I want. And now everybody's buying everything and we're back into the bidding war. Well, here we are, 2023. It, we're in an environment where there's very few sellers. Yep. Why are there few sellers? Because there's not that many distressed sellers. There's yeah. not, it's not. That's become, actually a good point. Yeah. And, and we've got this yeah. mortgage rate issue. So that's where you have to be able, as a buyer, a savvy buyer, to know when there's a down market, like we're in right now, yeah. it's a buyer's market, you have to say, in a buyer's market, there isn't going to be that much inventory. So how do I navigate that environment so that in two years from now, which most likely isn't going to be like a up and down like COVID, you're not it's, it's acting impossible. like it's 2021 yeah. again and saying, oh, I missed out again. Yeah. You know, you have to actually, Work with an agent, find out what's on the market, find out what's off market, but still available. Where's and, the funny part? Well, the funny part is- <laughs> I was waiting, I, w I wanna laugh, Eric. Well, the whole the whole situation is funny. <laughs> you're, gonna be the, you're, you're gonna be the guy who's in 2025 saying, I missed the chance again. You know, well, no, in 2025, I'm it's going to be, gonna like, be I don't the, respond to your inquiries six years later. <laughs> no, in 2025, they're gonna say, it's a good market, but that's when every buyer's in the market driving up yeah. the price, and that's not the time exactly. to buy. I, um, I I feel for buyers because if you're not working with a good agent, they're probably misguiding you or not telling you the right price and saying you could potentially refi in two to three years. You get a really low price compared to the market. Like, we haven't really... Well, you know, it's for another show, but we'll end it there. It's an incredible time to buy. Yes. Great time to buy. All right. Well, that's our show for today. We'll see you next week and uh, have a